Hi, how are you? My name is Teacher Mary, your teacher of English. And today we are just doing a lot of revision. We are concentrating on paper one and we will be looking at uh, verbal and nonverbal cues. Remember, we already did uh, an overview of what paper one entails and we are still looking at the 30 marks. So today we will be looking at verbal and nonverbal cues. So very quickly, let us try to define what verbal and nonverbal cues are. The word verbal, okay? The word verbal, the word verbal, that means you have to utter a word. Use of language has to be there, okay? So verbal, verbal, we say, uh, verbal, we say that language has to be used. Words must be uttered, words must be spoken, okay? So for you to know that that is a verbal cue. So we're going to look at some of the examples or some of the things that we usually say that this falls under verbal cue. We look at them here. So the verbal cues are like, one, repetition of words, repetition of words, repetition of words, repetition of words. So for, for an instance, or for example, when you're talking or when you're reciting a poem or when you're reading a story or you're in an audience or you're an orator, so many things, yeah? And you want to put emphasis on something. You really don't have to use your hands and everything. For you to be heard, for you to be understood, you can repeat that one. Repetition of words. The other one is, um, you can spell it out. You can spell out you can spell out what you want to put emphasis on. For example, the, this is not so good, but let's say someone hasn't understood what you're saying, and you can tell them, I am reading a book, a book. So they want to understand what this book is. So you'll spell it out. You'll say, book, book, or you can say, B double O K. So you can spell it out for them, to, under, to understand. The other word is using different tones, using different tones, using different tones. Remember we did stress and intonation, stress and intonation. So for this one, we're going to use different tones because that falls under verbal cues, different tones. I will give an example. Um, especially if you if you've made your parent angry. She left you some work to do and you haven't done. So she'll be like, Khadija, did you finish your homework? Did you wash your utensils? Okay? So you can hear the tone in which she uses to address you is harsh. It's not a loving one. But when she's comfortable with what you've done, she'll be like, Khadija, that is very nice. So harsh tone, um, a very loving tone, consoling tone, or when you're talking to a sick person, you'll not be harsh. Okay, so you tend to be loving and things like that. The other thing you can either uh, talk slowly, like reduce the pace, okay, or increase the pace faster. You can talk slowly or faster, depending. You can either talk slowly or faster. Then the other one, uh, you can also talk loudly, loudly. You can be loud, okay, or you can reduce your you can reduce your volume. So when you're shouting, uh, or when you're in a crowd and you want your audience to listen to you, will you just talk in a low pitch or in a low tone or in a low voice? No, you will not do that, okay? You will not do that. So you will need to increase your volume. You will need to speak up for everyone to listen what you want them to hear, okay? Or when, let's say you're reciting a poem and then there's a sad part, you want that message to come out. You will not say it aloud. So you tend to uh, go low a little bit. He came at me. That one, you see how I've increased my voice. And slowly slept by the lake. You can understand that. So depending, remember verbal cues, anything that you say verbally, use of mouth and use of words. Words must be spoken. Words must be uttered. Words must be heard. That's why we say verbal cues. Okay? 
So we come to nonverbal cues. Nonverbal cues from the word definition, none, none. It does not involve verbal. It does not involve words. It doesn't involve any utterances, any voice projection. We don't need that, okay? So what do we need? One, facial expressions. Facial expressions, how, you know, you can use your face to communicate, yeah? Like this, as you can see, I'm smiling. That means I'm very happy. If you haven't done your assignment or your homework, I'll not smile. So I'll be like, guys, why didn't you do your homework? You already know that for my face, I am not happy. So facial expressions is also a tool or a way that we know that that is um, nonverbal communication or and it falls under nonverbal cues. The other thing is body movement, body movement or gestures, body movement or gestures, body movement or gestures. So uh, let's assume that I'm in class and or I'm in an audience and I'm reciting a poem. And actually, I'm not even assuming, as you can see, I'm using a lot of my hands, yeah, to explain and to emphasize. So that alone is a body movement. Any part of your body that can move to express a certain message. If I don't agree with you, I'd like, I will nod. I will nod and say no. I don't have to say it, I just say, if I agree with you, I can say, oh, I haven't talked, I haven't uttered anything. Body movement or gestures. If I listen to a good song and I want to dance, you'll see me do something like that, okay? So body movement, that is also part of non verbal cue. We also have uh, gestures, 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 gestures. This is a little bit confusing, but I will need you to concentrate a little bit. Uh, body movement, this involves your whole entire body, okay? From your head to your feet. If the drum is being beaten, you can stamp your feet, okay? You can nod your head, you can shake a little bit, okay? But for gestures, gestures are specifically restricted to your hands. Gestures are specifically restricted to your hands, okay? So if I tell you, you already know that means please come. No, don't come, okay? Like, give me a call, you understand? So for gestures, specifically restricted to your hands. So in an, okay, we will look at how this are set in an exam setup. but please do not confuse yourself. If they ask you how would you perform a certain line, you can concentrate on this. And if you concentrate on gestures, then they can also ask you to uh, name the gestures that you can use. Kindly remember gestures are strictly, strictly hands. Please, just use your hands. Then the other one we have is eye contact. Okay. Contact, eye contact, eye contact, okay? So this is also a very good nonverbal cue or it is a way to know if the person you're talking to is actually listening to you or they're not actually listening to you. For instance, I wish you guys were here, you'd actually see how I maintain the eye contact. I will look straight into your eyes as I communicate with you, okay? But what about when someone is talking to you and they're busy looking away or busy looking down or busy looking past your head? Okay, that will automatically show you that this person is not concentrating on what you're telling them. They are so disinterested. They are not interested. They're not even listening to anything you're telling them. Okay, so guys, let us recap one more time. Uh, what are the signs or what are, uh, what are the ways of showing nonverbal communication or what are some of the nonverbal cues? Guys, let's now recap. Uh, what are some of the non-verbal cues we've discussed? One, facial expression, okay? How someone, you can read from their face, how happy, how sad, how disinterested they are. Two, body movement, the entire body, you know, when they're fidgeting, pushing the chairs, you know, something like that. Gestures, 
Use my hands. Use your hands. Use your hands. Talk about your hands. Eye contact. Are they looking at you? Are they looking away? Are they looking down? Are they looking past? Uh, let's see how these questions, how this topic is usually set in an exam setup. In so many different ways, but the two main ways that I want us to discuss are this, because this is what confuses a lot of candidates. One, how would you say this line? Let's say they've given you a story or a poem, and they'll ask you, how do you say this line? The key word, dear learner, please don't get confused, don't get stressed, is here. The word say. Do not tense up, do not get confused. The keyword is insane. If they ask you, how old you say, kindly stick to the verbal cues. Verbal cues. So you will answer in this manner. I would raise my voice. I would lower my voice. I would say in a harsh tone. Okay? That is how. When they ask you, say, refer to your verbal cues. Strictly. Then number two, if they ask you, how would you perform this line? Perform this line. Performance involves both verbal and non-verbal. So for here, you're free to give both verbal cues and both um, non-verbal. You're, you're free to give both. You can answer one verbal, one non-verbal. Okay? So there are so many ways in which they usually test, but these two, usually confuse a lot of candidates, and particularly this one. So, dear learner, because of the love we share, kindly do not get confused. If you see this, don't get confused. Concentrate on the verbal cues. I was your teacher, Miss Mary.